Dear friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen, which means in the name of God, His Word, His Spirit, Amen. Now you'll say, but I am an atheist. Okay, so in the name of the reason, <laughs> in the name of, the, of love, okay, and in the name of action. <laughs> let us talk, not nonsense, but let's talk logic with meekness and dignity. Let us also always keep our level, a very high level, since we are not animals. We are reasonable animals, we are moral animals. Unfortunately, uh, YouTube was done, taking an icon or a picture of Jesus Christ, and then having the, the picture somehow move it li its lips, and the person, an English-speaking person with an American accent, I believe, probably a non-Christian, perhaps even a Jew, or an atheist, I don't know, anyone who does not respect Christ at all. First of all, let me address that person. First of all, you have to keep a high level of morality. Do not continue being a low person using indecent expressions. This goes against your dignity. You are not offending Christ. You are offending yourself. We don't know your face. Although we would be grateful if you were telling honest enough to tell us who you are, what's your name, what your name is. But we hear your voice, and your voice is that of someone who has a low morality, with a very low vocabulary. I don't want to quote any of your expressions. So please, next time, Respect yourself more. I don't want you to respect, to I don't want to oblige you to respect Christ, but first of all, respect yourself. What sorts of vocabulary that person used? My dear English speaking people, you might guess, and I can't give any more details. But I can tell you that some words occurred at least ten times. Starting with the letter... Number two. You are mocking that person, mocked Jesus and the Eternal Father. My dad asked me to go and suffer. My dad asked me. And I didn't want to go, and I told him that, that all human beings are a word which starts with A. Well, so if Jesus told the Eternal Father that all human beings are as etc. Well, you are one of them. Did you take from all the gospel, from all the New Testament, which is the highest, the loftiest book ever written, just that double issue of father and son and the crucifixion of Christ, which you deny, of course, for the benefit of the Jews. How about all the rest, the teachings of Christ? You don't believe in his miracles? Let it be. How about his teachings? Love your enemies. 
Well, you are the beneficiary of Jesus' teachings because in spite of all your offenses and insults and your dirty words, which denote who you are and what you are, we love you, we respect you, we forgive you. And this we don't do only on this small or big screen or on internet. From the bottom of our hearts, we Christians have to love and to respect every single human being. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and as we forgive those who trespass against you. Actually, you did not offend us. You offended Christ. But by offending Christ, you, you are in a degradation. You did not respect your, your own self. I'm sorry to say this to that person who is absent, but of course we have all intention to put this on YouTube in our website, in our, at our address, YouTube and Facebook. And really we hope that this person, whoever he is, well, and I'm sure that if that person was a woman, a lady, she would have never pronounced such words. So, here we go. Let's not forget all the gospel for the sake of a couple of issues which we don't like. Number three. Father and son. Of course, the man is wrong. When he imagines that we are dealing with Mr. So-and-so and his son. We are not talking about a man and his son. Please read the Gospel of St. John. First chapter, first verse. In Arabic we say, read the letter from its title. Iqra al-maktub min anwanu. At the beginning was the word. In arhi in ologos. So it's not a man and his son. It's not my dad and me. It's God and his word. What does it mean? God and his will. Because the, the word is the expression of his will. How about the Holy Spirit? It's the spirit of God. In Hebrew, Ruach HaKodesh. In Aramaic, Ruach Hadi Qudsha. The spirit of holiness. Holiness being God himself. So it's God, his word, and his spirit. Do you have anything about against that? Is God against will? Is God without will? Is God without spirit? So it's God deciding to suffer, accepting to suffer and to die, of course not as a God, but as a man. And this you don't seem to like. It does not please you, so it's wrong. Well, it might also be difficult for some people, even for some Christians, to figure out why is this man's death saving me? What do I have to do with his death? Well, look at religions, look at the Old Testament. Abraham wants to sacrifice his son Isaac. God sends a goat instead of the son. This is actually also in the Islamic word, the feast of the sacrifice. And of course, although we are Christians, but also in the Quran, also in Islam, they believe in redemption. Which means that the goat's son, the goat's blood, uh, redeemed the son. The son was spared. And instead, the, the goat's blood. In the Old Testament, you have the sacrifices. Sacrificing animals. And God used to complain, 
You will read this in, in the Psalms, I think Psalm 49. Do I need to eat the flesh of your animals or drink their blood? The sacrifice for me is a pure heart. But the sacrifice is something significant because there you offer something. Some, some sins request the death of the sinner. So instead of killing the person, you just, you just offer an animal. How about the New Testament? You don't have any animal offerings anymore. No sacrifice, no sacrifice anymore. No human sacrifices like in the Canaanite world with Moloch or Malach to whom Canaanites would sacrifice their own children. Isn't that horrible? Number two, no more sacrifices of animals. We celebrate the sacrifice of the mass without any blood, just under the size of bread and wine. And here comes the fourth point. How about the sacrifice of Christ? You don't like the sacrifice of Christ. We have two explanations for the sacrifice of Christ. The one in the New Testament, meaning Jesus replaced, and you, this you find in the letter to the Hebrews, all the sacrifices of the Old Covenant. Once for all. Jesus died as a victim of violence so that nobody after him be victim of violence. This is the Christian idea. The Christian idea do not respond by violence to violence, not eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Forgive, do not answer violence by violence. Stop! violence. If people follow this, we wouldn't have any wars anymore. By the way, you notice that most of the Christian world, most of the Christian countries live in peace. Well, how about wars waged, for example, by the United States of America? Well, the United States of America, I'm talking about politics, I'm talking about government, is not ruled by Christian principles, but by other principles. When, when you realize, when you know that the government of the United States of America, where at least 90% of the population, Christians and Muslims, believe in Jesus Christ, when the government refused to acknowledge, to recognize the Church of the Nativity of Christ in Bethlehem as world cultural heritage, 90% of the population believes in Jesus and in the birth of Jesus as Christians and as Muslims. Who does not believe? 3% of Jews, less than 3%. Well, how about the 90%? Don't they have any voice? So this means that the government of the United States of America is not Christian. It's not even respecting the Christian majority or the Christian Islamic majority which acknowledges Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah born in Bethlehem. So my dear friends, the death of Christ replaces all the sacrifices of the Old Covenant, this we read here. Was that death necessary? No! Because God can save us without even the Incarnation. So do not get us wrong. God could have saved us without any Incarnation of His Word, without His Word becoming a flesh. It's possible. We never deny the power of God Almighty. So why 
did we need in Christianity? Now I'm talking about human viewpoint. Why did Jesus die? Not only did Jesus cry for our sins as a sacrifice, but there were also historic reasons for his death. Namely, the jealousy of the high priests, the jealousy of the scribes and the members of the Jewish Sanhedrin. This was the, this was the historic, I would say, horizontal reason for the death of Christ. What we before talked about was the vertical reason, namely the wish to redeem humankind. To redeem humankind from what? From selfishness. That same person who made Jesus talk, he said, Jesus died, but, but evil is still there. No, evil has... Where is evil in the Christian countries? When you think that the Christian countries nowadays, let's say Northern Europe, Northern, well, let's say Northwest Europe, they used to be barbarians. <laughs> they used to be Visigot, Ostrogot. They used to be savage. It's through Jesus that, it's through the Gospel, that they became the mildest, nations of this earth. And this is why people love to emigrate to Scandinavia, because there you are respected, you are, you are loved, you are cherished more than in your own country. You run away from your country to live in Denmark, Sweden. You run away from the Middle East, you run away from North Africa, you run away from Africa if you can. Every day you have immigrants dying in the oceans just for the sake of getting to Europe, getting to the United States of America. I'm talking as a country where you have the Christian civilization. John Paul II used to say the civilization of love. In other parts of the world we have the love of civilization, not the civilization of love. What used to be all these peoples? The Italians. Aren't they nice, the Italians? They used to be barbarian Romans, finding their delight, seeing the gladiators killing each other, seeing the beasts jumping on Christians and devouring Christians. These are the ancestors of our Italians who are so fine today and give us wonderful spaghetti and ravioli, <laughs> right? Look at the French, how nice they are. Look at the French language, how nice it is. They used to be the people of Gauls, G-A-U-L, savage people. Versailles-Jetorix, my goodness, you should not meet them. <laughs> etc., etc. How about the Germans? The Germanic tribes? They used to be savage. As soon as you arrive to Germany, you are respected. Even when you don't have papers, they treat you well. In other countries, they send you back right away. Immigration goes towards Christian countries. Why is that? Jesus did change much. As Mr. Jean-Jacques Voltaire says in one of his books, that throughout the centuries, books and ideas change people. How about monogamy in Christianity? Although we are not angels, as Christians, yet, there's the law of monogamy, even in the lay states, which claim that they are lay, they don't have anything to do with religion, yet, it's monogamy. Why? Because it's only in monogamy that there is respect for women, for women's feelings. How would a woman feel when she knows that she's only one of two or three or four Wives of the same man. 
who has to divide himself and his strength and his love among four wives. So this week I am here and next week I will visit my wife number two and monogamy. Polygamy is an evil. Jesus changed it. And we have this change in the constitutions until now of the Western world and even of other countries because they are smart and because they understand that when your wife and when your mother is a slave, even when you are a king, your children will be slaves because they will be the children of a female slave. Did I say slave slavery? Look at history. It's Christianity which has put an end to slavery. Where is slavery in the Christian countries? You don't find any. It's thanks to Jesus. It's thanks to his sacrifice. It's thanks to his words. Ideas win, even if they take a long time. You didn't have any country in the ancient world without slaves. The Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs, what does St. Paul say? Galatians 3, 27. There is no difference in Christ between men and woman, between Jew and, and Greek, between slave and the free person. We don't have two legislations for marriage. One for free people, one for slaves. Or a third one commanding or conditioning the marriage of a free man with a female slave. According to Jesus and to the New Testament, we have only one law for all, which means the equality between slave and free. And at the end, there are no slaves anymore in the Christian world. By the way, there were orders, religious orders, founded in order to free, to set the slaves free. Have you ever heard of the orders of mercy? What was the... What, is, what does mercy mean? Mercy means compassion. Who for? For the slaves! In order to set the slaves free. Les sœurs de la merci. Merci, it's not thank you, merci beaucoup. It's la merci, compassion, la merced, in Spanish. So there is much less evil. Already in the world, since 20 centuries, and there would be much less evil if Christians and non-Christians were to follow what Jesus said and did. Another point, another viewpoint, was it necessary for Christ to die? And the answer, humanly speaking, is yes. Because many people can speak wonderfully, but then they don't do anything. In Arabic we say, حلو اللسان قليل الإحسان A sweet tongue, but nothing good out of it. You have speakers. Let's talk about some political leaders who say, we have to fight, we... Well, well they never move. <laughs> and they never send their children. They send the children of the people, but never their own children. So they speak very well. My late dad, God uh, rest his soul in peace, would say, he used to say, Alil al-a'il biyurdi al-kalam. The superficial people, Polish people <laughs> are content with words. You speak very well, oh, 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 they are happy. No, you need deeds. A friend in need is a friend in deed. We need deeds and not just word, words. So Jesus gave us the deeds. He lived poorly. He didn't only preach about poverty. How about his sacrifice? The sacrifice of his life was necessary, humanly speaking. 
It's his credibility. Because someone who speaks very well might be a liar. But he speaks very well. A merchant speaks very well because he wants to sell you his merchandise. A merchant doesn't choke you because he knows that if he ever hurts your feelings, you'll never, you'll never come back again. So to speak well is not enough. How about miracles? Even magicians can produce miracles. <laughs> the only thing you cannot deny is when someone dies for his principles. Look at Socrates, if you don't want Jesus Christ. Socrates died except to drink the poison uh, as a consequence, as a, consequ a result of his principles. He did not give up his principles, he gave up his life, not his principles. Jesus Christ died for his principles. Don't you respect him for that? Thanks, Sancho.